Spirit of Texas Bank, Nissan, Slovacek Sausage, and Germania Insurance bring you this clip of the Texas Bucket List. Howdy, and welcome to the Texas Bucket List, the show dedicated to everything there is to see, do, and experience right here in the Lone Star State. My name is Shane McAuliffe, and this week we start things off in the live music capital of the world, Austin. That's where we headed to a honky tonk with a whole lot of history. Thank y'all for coming out to the Broken Smoke, the last of the true Texas dance halls, and damn sure proud of it. Whenever James White takes the stage at the Broken Smoke in Austin, people take notice. Somebody said uh, that, I oh, said, you're a legend. And I said, well, hell, I guess I'm old enough to be a legend. We ain't fancy, but we're doing sure our country. The good news is we ain't gonna change nothing. We ain't getting none of them hanging fern baskets on that hill out here. None of that pee air water either. When you go up front all your hamburger, don't ask for that great coupon. You're getting the real mustard out here. Mr. White knew exactly what it would take to succeed in the world of honky tonks in Texas. We got cold beer, good whiskey. We are the home of the best chicken fried steak in town. And we got good country music. We got Cornell Hurt here tonight. But before we got to the good times and dancing, we sat down with the man who had a vision bigger than the city that seems to be spreading like wildfire around him. My family's always lived in this area ever since uh, 1836 when my ancestors came here and they fought for Texas independence. With his larger than life personality, I mean, he is a true Texan, James doesn't have to look far to find his family roots. Heck, he's standing right on them. I was born and bred right here in Austin, Texas. In fact, the only years James spent outside of our great state is when he served in the Army for three years in the 1960s. As soon as he finished his military career, James was ready to march to his own beat. The day I got the Army, September 25th, 1964, I started building the broken spoke, and uh, I got it open in November the 10th. Half a century ago, this part of the capital city looked a whole lot different than it does now. Back then, the broken spoke was off the beaten path. All it was was raw Texas land, and there wasn't another building in sight. The city limits was like a mile down the road on the right. I visualized a place like no other, and when I got it built, I named it the broken spoke. <laughs> <laughs> Despite being on the outskirts of Austin, the Broken Spoke expanded three times in its first two years of existence, and legends like Leon McAuliffe, Ernest Tubbs, and even Bob Wills played here. He walked in the front door, Bob Wills did, and they about fell off the bar stool. <laughs> you know, cause, cause they started whispering and said, man, said, that's, that's Bob Wills. But as the 60s came to a close, James became close friends with an artist that had released four studio albums of his own. 1967, I started booking Willie Nelson and the Record Men. Hell, I only had to pay him $800 back in 1967, and I booked him several times. Willie became a regular at the Spoke, and so did thousands of Austinites. Over the years, good times were had, countless songs had been danced to, and romance blossomed. A lot of my friends, they said, well, hell, I met my wife right at the Broken Spoke. <laughs> You can include James in the plethora of people whose love story started with a two-step. It was during the early years that he met his wife Annette, and unlike most country songs, Annette stuck around, and she's as much a part of the spoke as James is. My job anymore seems like I'm in charge of BS and PR, <laughs> and my wife is the working half of the family, and we ain't gonna change nothing. Yeah, this is uh, the famous Broken Spoke stage here. Has it changed much over 50 years? This stage here? No, it hasn't changed nothing. <laughs> <laughs> when standing on this old stage, it's hard to fathom the amount of Texas-sized talent it's been able to support. I had people tell me years ago, said, why don't you do this, this stage, and why don't you put carpet up here, and why don't you do this? And I said, hell, I said, Bob Wills was right here. I said, George Strait's right here. Well, you know, why would I change anything about this stage? You know? <laughs> and the same goes for the dance floor. Built on a foundation that's seen generations of memories and magical moments, it's one of the few floors where dancing the night away can come true with a simple question. I tell the men, I said, well, the women come out here dance, you know. All you gotta do is just go over and ask them a nice way, you know, would you care to dance, you know. And uh, 
Give, uh, give them a smile and give them your hand and take them out there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's all it takes. Nine times out of ten, it works, right? <laughs> well, if it, if it doesn't work, you just try to try another one. <laughs> <laughs> How often do you make sure you dance with your wife on the dance floor? Well, you know, when, whenever she asks me to dance, I know I better get out and dance, you know. <laughs> she might kick me if I don't. <laughs> I, I still remember after this good friend of mine poured the concrete on this floor, if it dried that night, and uh, we put a few tables and chairs back here, and we were the first ones, to, we was all by ourselves, we were the first one to dance on this floor. And that's been a long time ago, you know. <laughs> time is a funny thing especially at a place as timeless as the Broken Smoke. For James, 1964 isn't a distant memory, it's part of his life. It's been 50 years since that all happened, and, and I'm still here, I was 25 years old, and hell, now I'm 75. <laughs> After 50 years, you know, it's, um, sometimes, you know, you get to thinking, you know, the darn it, it's, it's been a long time, then sometimes it doesn't seem like it's been that long. <laughs> In a room James fondly calls the tourist trap, you'll find all the special times the spoke has been a part of. It's a walk down memory lane for James as he tells each and every story like it just happened yesterday. From pictures with the legends to the cowboy hats of country stars and presidents. There's one picture back here in the back. That's, that's, all, that's all the Texas Playboys. And that's Tom, that's uh, Liam McCall in the middle with his upright steel guitar. This is me back in my younger days with Bob Wills. As Ace and the whole band, and we got real small print, Pooch and George Strait, <laughs> and Friday. Hanging right in there, seemed like yesterday. Then this is what I was talking about with Dolly. Turns out it's not just a honky tonk. The Broken Spoke is part of the lifeblood of Texas. It's a legend right here in Austin. It's about as Texas as you get. We've heard so much about it, so it's lived up to the hype. As the ultra-modern city of Austin grows around the shack that shakes five nights a week, it truly is the spoke that sticks out. You see, there's nothing broken here. It's perfectly sound, perfectly Texan in every sense of the word. The pictures of all of the legends are hanging up on the wall with pure country music coming from the hall. It's a red, rustic old building where the dirt parking lot. There's a big old oak tree by the highway. That means quite a lot. If you like waltzes and polkas, two-step cotton eye Joe, deep in the heart of Texas, there's a place that you should go. It ain't fancy, but it's country. So wear your jeans and your cowboy hat. Just cross Saddle River. Cause that's where it's at. <laughs> nice, nice. That's you gotta great. be a poet to write a song anymore. <laughs> truly, truly. <laughs>